The third type of movement you need to know is called facilitated transport. Think of what the word facilitated means. To facilitate something means to make it easier. So facilitated transport is the movement of solutes with the concentration gradient with the aid of a carrier molecule. In this case, a membrane is also required, but energy in the form of ATP is not. Molecules that are moved by facilitated transport include glucose and amino acids. The fourth form of transport you need to know is active transport. Active transport is the opposite of the other three types of transport. As solutes are being moved against the concentration gradient rather than with it. Because they are moved against the concentration gradient, active transport does require energy in the form of ATP. A membrane and a carrier molecule are also required. Examples of molecules that are moved by active transport are ions such as the sodium ion. The sodium potassium pump is a common example of active transport that you will see in this course. There are two other special types of active transport that you will need to know, and they are endocytosis and exocytosis. In the case of endocytosis, molecules are being moved into the cell by the taking in of matter by a living cell by invagination of its membrane to form a vacuole around this material. Exocytosis is the opposite of endocytosis and is the movement of material out of the cell by which a vacuole fuses with the cell membrane and the contents of the vacuole are released out of the cell. Finally, I want to talk a little bit about the different conditions that affect the rate of diffusion. When identifying a condition that affects the rate of diffusion, it is important that you clarify how diffusion is affected. For example, if you identify temperature as a factor that affects the rate of diffusion, you must indicate how, as increasing temperature will increase the rate of diffusion and decreasing temperature will decrease the rate of diffusion. See the chart in your student notes for the rest of the conditions that affect the rates of diffusion. To finish off this unit then, you need to be able to label the different parts of the cell membrane and identify the function of each of the structures. You need to be able to define each of the four types of transport and identify the types of molecules moved by each. You need to be able to differentiate between hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic solutions and predict the outcomes of these comparisons. And finally, you will need to be able to identify the different factors that affect the rate of diffusion.